order at 631. Um, I'd like to recognize a lot of the public. And like we did last meeting, I think if we could just take a minute to go around and have everybody introduce themselves and say what who they're with or if they're with any, here for any special reason. So um, can we start with you, Don? <coughs> Don McLean, Broadbrook Community Center. Sarah Coffey, the Broadbrook Community Center. Nathaniel Matheson, I'm on the Planning Commission. Michelle Frizzee, Planning Commission. Mimi Morton, Historical Society. Whichever hat you're wearing tonight. <laughs> Jerry Baker, Cemetery Commission. Allison McRae, Cemetery Commission. Chris Lenoir, Brattleboro Community Television. Uh, Sean Murphy, Cemetery Commission. Hi, Sean. Can't see you. <laughs> Hello. Um, I'll waive the rules of procedure. Are there additions to the agenda this evening? No. Anybody else? No. Um, any changes to the agenda order? Not for me. No. Um, uh, so the first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of November 12th, 2018. I so second. Any are discussion? Are you going to do them together or are you going to do them one at a time? We're going to do them one at a time. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm abstaining because I wasn't there. Um, I thought last time you said that you were you could vote even if you weren't here. You can, but I'm choosing not to. <laughs> okay. Um, and the, we're going to the. Uh, is there a mo motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of November 26, 2018? So moved. Anybody second? Sure. Yeah. Thank you, Belinda. <laughs> <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm going to pass around both copies to sign, please. Okay. Uh, the top one is the 12th, the bottom one is the 26th. And the, the, the earlier one has the addendum. It has both. The addendum. Uh, yes, it has both memos attached, and I made the other two so edits. Thing. I must be missing something. Oh, there we go. I thought it would be at the end. It is, but that's the two addenda. Oh, I see. Okay. Thank um, you. So, moving right along, do we have an update from the highway? Yes. Um, Dan it has a prior engagement this evening and is not obviously here. Uh, and they have spent basically the entire week uh, repairing equipment. Right. Um, they have been uh, working on the three trucks that went down. One of them they were unable to do the work themselves and had to send it away. Um, doing some work on the backhoe as well. And they worked on a couple culverts. Other than that, it was all fixing equipment, waiting for the next storm. Thank you. <coughs> Moving on to new business, we have our annual update from the Planning Commission. Do for me to sit here? Should I stand I or should think I? If you sit next to Richard, then everybody can see you and you can be on TV. Sit. <coughs> you have to roll, chair. Chair. roll your chair. Roll your chair. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Richard. Hi. So, 2018. Um, I will say I've been sitting in this seat for about six years now, and it's been a very interesting year. It's been very different from every other year because we haven't been able to focus on anything we were trying to focus on. Uh, we did do an update to the energy section, which was pretty substantial. We've worked on that, golly, going on two years, I believe, and all these iterations that happened. But we do have something now. It probably needs improvement again. But at least there's an updated copy out there that's been approved by the town, submitted. All that's been done. Then we focused a lot on the Kurtzheimer Drive, a lot on solar installations this year. Uh, we had more people come to our meetings, more public, right, than, yeah. than all of it together for me, which is wonderful. I, I'm thankful that people are coming to us and, and being a part of our meetings. I feel like that's a big leap in the right direction to utilize the Planning Commission in that regard. So we did that, um, trying to stay up to date with that, ended up 
working with you guys on what we submitted. And then um, following that is the floodplain, the FAQs that we've been working on. That's also taken up another good chunk of our year, which is still ongoing. And we're kind of at pause on that till we see how things play out coming into January. But we feel really good about all the groups working together, you guys, Conservation Commission, and us um, on developing the FAQs and then sharing them. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what else to say about that. Right. So uh, we're trying to stay um, up to date on what's happening with the living communities piece as well. It's not a planning commission thing, but something that many people on the commission care about. So trying to follow that. And we talk about that a good bit in our meetings. But uh, the big thing right now is, and the only thing I'd like to talk about, honestly, is moving forward. And so this year has been a lot of checking the boxes and trying to be that um, working part of the town. And with that in mind and everything that's come to our table, through all these different pieces, um, one of the things we wrote in the town plan for 2015 was to be able to create a kind of guidebook for anyone that moves to town or anyone that lives in town, some way to combine all of the efforts of everyone into one single document. So we are now focusing on a Guilford handbook. And I brought a couple. Uh, the Dummerston handbook actually was brought to me by the Dummerston Historical Society when they came to visit me in the museum a few years ago, but I love it. It's beautiful. Got the little Moses, but the way that it's broken down into our heritage, the place, maps, you can put anything into it that we've worked on with Wyndham Regional, the cultural fabric. I love the way they have named it, the recreation, the education. Um, so this is our, our main guidepost as we move forward. And I said at the last meeting I wanted to focus the next six months on this and I feel like the Planning Commission is really excited to um, reach out to everyone in town. We all have different assignments. We're going to be talking to people. We want to have a lot of narrative in there to talk about who we are and not just in a, um, I don't know, what would you say? You don't want it to be, it doesn't need to be like dry and like spelling it out. More coming from the voice of the town. So our goal at this point is to create a working document by a town meeting to be able to print wow. off some basic, it's not going to be this, but it's going to have headers. And within the headers, there might be bullet points if we've gotten that far. But we want to be able to share that with the town, talk about it, and ask people to leave notes or something. We're trying to figure out how that can be so that they can share anything they want to, whether it's an experience or photograph or um, something they want, like this is one from Middlesex, and they call it their operator's manual. And um, But I really like how they line out each position you can hold in town and what it might be like to volunteer for that position and then what the time commitment is or the meetings and things like that. And so combining this one from Dumberson and this one from Middlesex, these are the two that I've seen that I really appreciate that I feel like could work for us um, we're we're diving in. I don't know where it's going to go, but we're trying to look on work on something a little lighthearted. We laughed a lot at our last planning commission meeting, <laughs> and it was great to sit around the table. There's very nine, uh, very diverse nine group, of the whole board. Like we're all very different, live in different parts of town, different experience. It's it's pretty much 50-50 as far as who's been here forever and who's new. So it feels like a good consensus. And I know I'm supposed to report on last year, but you guys know yeah, what last great, year yeah. was. That's great. That's so great up there. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is where we are now, and this is our focus. We're <coughs> always open to anything else that comes to the table, and we need to talk and be a part of that. But And we're looking forward to that. I know one of our things at the last meeting was wanting to invite BBCC to our meeting, you know, because there's different things going on that we want to be a part of. But this is the focus. And so anything that you guys have to share too is great. I know that um, many boards in town have, from the Recreation Commission, the Conservation Commission, have all um, stepped up to take on different parts. And I think the Conservation Commission is even working on kind of that operator's piece of who does when, what, or how. Um, 
So it's just pulling it all together. And I don't want it to take too long because we have to redo our town plan. So Which is do you 2020. Have to do the 2020 or 2020. Are we on to the eight year cycle now? We're not. We missed it by about a month. Six days. Uh -huh. Six days. I looked it up. Until I knew it was in the no. same month. Yeah, it was, it was really get close. Special dispensation? No. no I, I, wish. Tried to, I tried to get John Bennett, but it was the time when WRC approved it, right? It's right. No. <laughs> no. So we are not under that. So 2020, we do have to have another, and there are things that could be worked on. But yeah. I think this is a big step forward based on what we wrote in the last town plan, and then we can branch off from there. There's so much goodness happening in town right now. It, it, I don't want to get too pigeonholed in one thing until we see how more things flush out. So. Sounds wonderful. Terrific. Uh, I will say that the, the thing about all the volunteers is consistent with what we were talking about at our last meeting. About just where can, I mean, we, I know we have a lot of them on the website and the select board handbook has some descriptions, but we really are looking forward to I, I doing think that is something that we committed to as well. Yes, and, and just having this in a printed way, it, I know a lot of people will want a PDF and that's great and we can make it available, but to have a beautiful booklet like this available at the town office in the future, I, mm -hmm. I know budget, there's lots of other things to talk about this and the process, but we want to do the work and maybe we'll come back and talk to you about that. In this so. But if we're thinking about budget for the year 2020, should we, talk about we, it right should, now? we don't need to talk about it right now, but we need to get to it in a budget meeting, yeah. which all the budget meetings are worn, so maybe. So for this year, we did ask. Rough idea. Um, so this year on the budget, we asked for an extra $500 above our $1,000 that's allotted. $250 of that was to go to the Energy Committee, which has now been formed upon our approval of the Energy section and we have this subcommittee and they're trying to do a survey and the cost for them to do that survey is between 200 and 250 so we wanted to put that under our umbrella um, then we also want to be able to cover the initial cost so anything that might be printed to share at town meeting any first drafts all of that we would also like to be able to cover there's no way that our minuscule planning commission budget can pay for the printing of this right when it's done so that's kind of a separate conversation, but we would like to at least do all of the work and be able to pay for printings between now and it being final, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Okay. Right? Like, yeah. that sounds good to me. Um, I know you've been busy. I know this has been a tough year, and I am impressed that you still have a full commission. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it's it's been a challenge for some of the commissions in town to stay fully, um, fully uh, person. <laughs> I would say it's been a very enlightening year. It's been a very tough year. There's more been more in depth, heart to heart, like felt across the table, mm -hmm. like different sides mm -hmm. of Guilford thought, all of it, and we've really worked hard to come together. And it was amazing to see a full commission there at our last meeting and laughing together and trying to work on something like this. Like, it, it feels wholesome and uh, very positive about where we can head so that when the next Kirchheimer <laughs> or something, yeah. you know, like I don't want to call something out, but where we all need to be able to think together, I feel like we're doing a lot of building together as a group of people. And I think that's a big testimony to you, Michelle. Thank you a Thanks, lot. Thank you. Well, it also feels like um, part of the character of the handbook will be, um, you know, we represent, uh, we, what you might call the hidden diversity of, you know, of this particular town, and it is a town we try to think, where people can disagree strongly, vehemently, and work together. Right, and um, one thing that we did talk about that is, as soon as we write this, it's going to be history. Right. And it, we began talking about what we could represent from years past or who we are and like, and then you always end up on the history or the history book or like the, it's like, no, what is going on right now? And so that's what each person at the table is going to try to talk to someone in town, someone that they cross paths with and record little bits of that for us to come back and interweave it through it. And I think sharing what Guilford is at this moment. Mm -hmm. You know, this will be antiquated 10 years from now. This is good. But 
if we can give it our best effort at this moment, it will help record that little piece. So um, it seems like a fun project, and I hope it works out for us. It's a lot to undertake. I'll be glad to help with some of the gathering voices. Really? Thank you. Great. We'll take any yeah, help, and I would talks. like to say that on PCTV. Anyone that has anything to share is completely welcome to send me an email, give me a call. We do want to hear from everyone to help make this a community document to enunciate what the fabric of Guilford in 2019 is. So. Yeah, but there, but you're, you're conceiving that there will be some sort of unchanging pieces. The operation Definitely, the way the operation yeah. piece and, you know, the history, you know, is that there's going to be all that. The maps are yeah. what they are, what can and provide. And that's going to be vital. To like you. all of the, we can do the, the different things that are in the town plan. We can put in here so people can understand. Um, there's a lot that's not changing, but just to have that voice yes. throughout. So anyone, no matter no matter age or demographic or you know, like what they do from day, to, they can have a voice within it to be able to share and say what matters to them or what their life is like. Like little one or two liners doesn't need to be. We we talked a lot about not having this whole article, mm -hmm. like make it more of a little bit mm -hmm. here and here be lots of them. So. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Do you have any idea if you'll be a, interested in applying for a municipal planning grant <coughs> this year? It hasn't come up yet. Um, honestly, I would say that we don't have a lot of particular direction because there's so much going on in town right now. We're trying to just keep up. Um, <laughs> if there's something that shows that we could, should, <coughs> based on what's transpiring, then yes. And I would urge anyone, like with projects, there's a lot of big projects happening right now, but um, I don't, we don't have something separate yet. We're not to that point. We want to do a lot of planning for that. And it seems really important for us to get this done so that we can move forward. Thank you both. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Very much. Appreciate the um, Going from planning to cemetery. <laughs> That's right. Our death was update. So should um, we have the other cemetery sure. commissioners come up? Yeah, you want to just drag a chair? Yourselves one more time. Okay, so, so the five cemetery commissioners Allison McRae, Sean Murphy, Jerry Baker, Eric Morse, and me. And we like to joke that it's a lifetime appointment. <laughs> if you die on the job, you don't have far to go. So there are 17 cemeteries in Guilford, and I counted 11 that are under our care. And there are a total of more than 900 graves that we're in charge of. Um, the oldest stones are in Blanchard Cemetery up above Marjorie Evans's, and they date back to 1775. And so the commission is responsible for care and management of the cemeteries. And it's an interesting sidebar that um, that the commission is responsible for having a space for everyone who wishes to be buried in the town, including indigents. And historically, there would be a designated part of the cemetery for the poor who couldn't pay. So the commission provides text for deeds, sells burial rights, lays out plots, sets a fair price, uh, that supposedly contributes to upbeat, uh, upkeep, <laughs> submits an annual report. And one of our responsibilities is setting out flags every year. And the flags that are provided for us for veterans come from China. <laughs> Go figure. And so uh, 
we sell burial rights. It's not really, uh, uh, you don't own the piece of ground and the plot price as of 2011 is $400 and hasn't gone up. The plot size is 40 inches by 120 inches and that's, that will accommodate one person in a casket or whatever, a winding sheet, uh, or else four cremated remains. And so physical care historically in, entails the removal of unsightly weeds, unchecked growth of grasses, and I wanted to commend Jerry Baker for being out in the coldest day recently cutting brush in the Maplehurst Cemetery. And so we have uh, historically, uh, well, our tasks involve mapping, straightening stones, communicating with hired workers and families in need, setting out a future vision for our main burial ground to accommodate our aging population. Cemetery commissioners have a special obligation, I read today, to keep fences that surround public burial grounds in good repair. In fact, failure to repair such fences within 20 days after receiving a written notice could result in liability for the damage done as a result of that disrepair, plus a penalty of up to $400 same as getting a plot. The fine shall be used to repair the fence under the direction of a commissioner appointed by the court. So luckily no harm has come as a result of the dilapidated fence along Coolidge Highway. Allison, do you have pictures? I do, yes. Oh, isn't that great? Okay, so these are our visuals. Just pass them around, do you think? Yeah. And I've, I've put, you know, where they are taken from and you know what what they're all and so um, Eric is going to talk about uh, the sort of the future vision and yeah. Jerry can uh, <coughs> update us about our current efforts to we can circulate these through the audience as well I'm yeah. sure everybody is trying to see what it looks like they're giant. <laughs> 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 Thank you for these, Allison. They're yeah. very informative. <laughs> so uh, I'll talk a little bit about the the somewhat recent history of Maplehurst Cemetery, and what you have before you is a survey showing the full extent of Maplehurst. Um, there's an old, let's see, I do have a, um, a copy here that's highlighted for the select board. I could turn it around as well. Yeah, but, maybe so that the... Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll explain already. to the select board first. So there's an area here, it's labeled Old Maplehurst, right along Route 5. Mm -hmm. Back here there's an area called uh, Old Elmhurst, which is uh, east of Route 5. In between, there's a field which we're calling the New Maplehurst. <laughs> the whole thing will just be Maplehurst. So for the, uh, if you can see it, there's, th this is Route 5 north. Um, this is the extent of the whole Maplehurst Cemetery. This was the Old Maplehurst the old Elmhurst, and then the new part is a field between them. Who, who owns that field? So it, uh, a little background here. So I've been on the cemetery commission for a long time, and it was sometime in the 90s. Um, we had, had requests for burials. Uh, we were trying to encourage burials um, or discourage them in the historic cemeteries. So we saw a need for a new cemetery for the town. And, um, you know, we toured all the cemeteries, all the areas, and this field between these two old cemeteries seemed to really make a lot of sense. So um, 
you know, being a surveyor, I asked the uh, select board for authorization to research that property, see whose it is, and <coughs> see about buying it. And uh, in my research, what I found this old map, indeed. The, uh, the actual title of this map is Land the Town Wishes to Purchase from Faith Fairbank. And it was in 1969. Hmm. And the town did purchase it. Oh. So what I found out was <laughs> the town already owned it. Oh, so it's yeah, yeah, a, yeah, little, a lesson in lost knowledge when you know you don't have institutional memory. Because that was you know not a long time from uh, well the names on this deed were, were pretty familiar at the, uh, at the time. I don't know um, your, the suspense was killing us. Right. So anyway. <laughs> Yeah, that's the back end. So, so this was a copy of that old map that's recorded at the town and the deed that's at the town for that property. So we, um, so the, planning, uh, the cemetery commission has continued to view that now that we, we realize it's ours as the new part of uh, the Maplehurst Cemetery where we would encourage uh, current burials in town. The, the old cemeteries are tricky because we're not sure about the completeness of the records or of the placement of stones, and we don't want to by mistake bury some of them that are using them. So people had used some heavy equipment in some of the historical right. cemeteries, and that was rather destructive. Yep. So if uh, someone does want to get uh, buried in the old cemetery, um, one of the old cemeteries, uh, we try to limit that to cremation remains, so least disturbance. Uh, one other interesting note, if you can look on the survey, I have a line here which is to the east of the, the old Elmhurst Cemetery, mm -hmm. and it says Old Roadbed. So right, here's Route 5, here's the old cemetery, Old Elmhurst, and there's a line here that says Old Road Bed. So when I did look up the deed for Old Elmhurst, it described the cemetery being on the west side of the road from Guilford to Greenfield. And I thought that was odd since everything was on the east side of Route 5. It's so it was uh, one of the community service days. I went out there with a group of uh, school kids, second graders and eighth graders. We cleaned up the cemetery and um, I said, well, let's look for this old road. And it was pretty exciting. We went out there and, the, you know, big trees growing in it, but it was really defined. So I put that on the map. Was cool. that so old well, Route 5? That, that was, <coughs> oh, before, you know, before it was cool called Route 5. Right. But that, the main road used to be over there. Mm -hmm. And you can follow that for a ways, but you can see why they abandoned it because of wetlands and Route stream 91. changes. Hmm? Route 91. Right, it's where we <laughs> just blast right through the wetlands. So, uh, this so is a um, history. And, and That's great. So this map is in progress as we develop the cemetery. I'll, I'll be updating it and it That's could be awesome. used for other planning purposes. That information can go in there. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, the commission has been talking extensively. We had requested funding to get started on the fence. And, uh, and so, Jerry, did you want to talk about some of our attempts to get a fence company to work with us? Well, we've been out in uh, search for three prices to do it. It's been difficult to come up with three prices. Uh, but as the season dragged on, the wetness, we didn't get to do it this year. Hopefully, we can. Do it early next summer. Mm -hmm. Replace at least the road side, Route 5 side, and as we develop plans here, perhaps we want to run east and west to um, demarcate the whole cemetery. And also change the general access. If there's a, if there's a funeral there now, people would generally pull over along Route 5, and we're thinking that it would be. Uh, safer to have access to the other side. Okay. Um, so on the uh, map, this is Route 5, we're working on replacing the fence along Route 5, 
and for a distance along the north line heading east. And it's along this line where we propose a new gate and entrance to the cemetery. There is a gate along Route 5, but there's a chain across it, and it's nice looking. We don't want to take that chain down, but it, it's dangerous there. So to the select board, here's Route 5. Um, we're working on the fence along Route 5 and the distance uh, east along the north line and about uh, getting a new gate from that yeah. direction. And exploring our potential right of way for that, um, for that other access road. And also we have in our reserve funds uh, $5,855.50. So um, we're not, you know, we're asking to be level funded at our old rate and we'll um, go into our reserve funds for the construction. Yeah, it's, it's been really interesting, the whole process of talking about replacing or upgrading That's the white fence. So what we came down to was that we all thought it would be good to have a split rail fence it would actually be on the inside of the granite markers that are vertical uh, and it wouldn't follow the pattern of the granite markers so all the white fencing would come down and then a split rail fence behind which we thought would you know give a little protection from the snow plows uh, when they push snow off Route 5 and it would it would have a really nice look to it um, it's kind of impossible to use the granite because the spacing is pretty odd and Random. we thought why disrupt all the granite posts we'll just go behind it and have it independent so mm -hmm. uh, that's the current thinking and Jerry's been doing contact with uh, with various companies so hopefully that'll that'll happen next spring mm -hmm. is there any concern with the granite posts or whatever you want to call them remaining without that fence almost as a protection element before it gets to the granite. Yeah, to, to, to protect the granite. Yeah. The, the granite is pretty sturdy. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, there's some that are broken and a couple of them are down, but I think we actually, I think it was Eric or Jerry or Allison found uh, a big group maybe that was oh, yeah. Miranda. Yeah, so there, there are some over towards Elmhurst, mm -hmm. so maybe we can you know, employ some of those and use them as replacements. But I mean, taking down that fence doesn't, you don't feel have any impact on I, the I think it would probably almost improve it because gotcha. the, yeah. the white the fence appearance it would certainly pretty, improve it. Pretty badly yeah. in yeah. disrepair. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the marble stones in that cemetery, which Charlie Marchant from the Old Cemetery Association said were a very poor quality of marble that people generally use, are really ugly, I mean dirty, and we had tried to pursue uh, a conservator, Connie Silver, for many years to have her work on those stones, and uh, it was too long a story to go into about why that didn't happen, but Eric is going to reach out to her and see if she can teach us to clean some of those stones in an appropriate way. So I think that's the end of our report. That's great. Thank Thank you. So great much. education. Yeah. Thank I just you for sharing. Oh, yeah. that you'll have enough, like you have a capital reserve. It seems like you are tasked with a lot of maintenance and potentially deferred maintenance and mm -hmm. groundskeeping. So do you feel that you have a, stra a, a strategy you feel is sufficient for moving forward long term in order to be able to do what you need to do? Well. It's an interesting issue that years ago we had discovered that the Cemetery Commission could theoretically start to build an endowment by getting, as the Rec Commission requested as well, getting dedicated uh, funds uh, donated to the Cemetery Commission and uh, you know, I think a while back, and I'm kind of fuzzy about this, there was some kind of issue with bookkeeping that was discouraging to us about it. But Are it, any donations we got or, or contributions for specific maintenance 
uh, just went into the general fund. We didn't. We, there's no place for us to put. Well, I mean, there was some thought that they could be earmarked to us, but um, so no, we don't really have a friends of the cemetery, uh, cemeteries to do that. But it would be possible if we could work out. Um, actually finding an appropriate way to have people donate to the cemeteries to build more of a fund than what we have. You know, it's very shoestring. Yeah, I was going to say, and the $400 seems, I don't even know if that'll cost, what it costs to, to actually bury somebody in the ground, but it seems like it might cost more than $400. I don't know the well, it, just all, on that. <laughs> um, the, their four hundred dollars. We're not burying them for that. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, that's just the plot. They have that's the plot. They've so got to. Oh no, I'm not out there digging. <laughs> <laughs> Where does the money for the plot end up? The money for the plot ends up into up the, into the town. Town. to the town yeah. coffers. Yeah. It make, I'm just wondering whether it makes sense every time you sell the four hundred dollars to put it in a something that actually might accrue interest and then you can oh, then right. raise it the for princely interest. <laughs> oh, didn't we hear Do that something. interest rates are going up? They are. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but a quarter. Something. But but something I think that's that a good have. idea, Gabby. I think yeah. it's you know, it could be a con contributing factor to your budget and to your to the long term planning. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think well, it's, it would it's be not that it's not rocket science to do something like that. Either. No. Well it would be it something would be. I could take up uh, you know, on behalf of the cemetery commission yeah. with um with Penny or whoever, Pete, Pete, mm -hmm. right, Peter, yeah. Peter, they both, right, okay. Any other questions? Yeah. I just had a quick question. It's more of a curiosity. I mean, I live right across from Blanchard Cemetery, so I'm particularly interested in it. We actually mm -hmm. found our son's name on a gravestone in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's how you picked it? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Some people you we tell that and they're like, oh my god, that's <laughs> kind of morbid. But <laughs> what's the name? Um, Asa. Asa. I think it's great. Yeah, yeah. I do too. Right. Oh, um, but you said it had the oldest gravestones in Guilford, and we've wondered, we've noticed it's pretty old. We're wondering how it ranks as far as um, cemeteries in Vermont. Is it one of the oldest? Gee, the I um, I wouldn't know that, but I found uh, looking through my old documents, one from the old town cur clerk Marguerite Evans, who was town clerk when I first moved to town and she had notes on all of the cemeteries and she said that the Blanchard was the oldest but I'm sure that if the oldest stone was 1775 um, I imagine there are some older ones although Guilford was yeah, yeah. but you we know, have the book the metropolis um, that, you know, that lists all the cemeteries in Vermont in the ages oh, as the stones so um, I don't know where that I know I have a copy. There it's might a copy be a copy here, here right? Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Sure thing. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Great education. Yeah. Now the historicals are coming up. Um, next up is the historical society, and you might as well leave a couple chairs up here, everybody. <laughs> Well, I, I, I play musical chairs. Just oh, just Mimi. I'll come sit with you. Think so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, great. Here's a. We wouldn't want her to be lonely. Here's my document with a. Thank you. That. Mm. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm probably going to read this because I was timing myself. I only thought I had five minutes, so maybe I. Uh, I want to say that. Uh, the, the, the Guilford Slate, our newsletter, is coming out probably next week, and I'm sorry I don't have it to give it to you because it will give you a sense of what we've been doing, what we're going to do in 2019, and we're in a kind of a, a very, we're in a watershed moment for the Historical Society. I think things are really changing. And uh, we're becoming more activist and more engaged in the community, but I'm just going to start actually reading this. And it's about the insulation and lighting upgraded to the museum. And I want to thank you for letting me be on the agenda tonight. I know you don't have much time. And we are grateful to for the town's capital assessment of the museum, which is your building. 
Uh, based on this assessment, and it's extensive, our two most urgent needs for the museum are improved heat and light, because at this point, even in the summer, it's, a, it's very cold, it has, it, it has very little insulation, and the light, lighting is terrible, it, it, you know, and we have to cover the windows to prevent uh, sunlight affecting the collection, but it, it, even in the middle of the summer, it, it's, it's hard to see what you're looking at. Uh, so our, the, the needs are urgent because the museum is increasingly being used by the Guilford Center School teachers and their classes as part of the place-based education. Uh, so far in 2018, our curator, Michelle, has led, with teachers and students, eight visits to the museum for hands-on historical research, and the kids have had a fabulous time, and the teachers are more and more interested in bringing classes in 2019, and we anticipate that there'll be uh, adults and children using the museum each month of the academic year. And we typically don't have the museum open in the winter, but increasingly, as I said, we are because teachers want to uh, develop lesson plans around Guilford history and things. Okay. So as it stands, the building is poorly insulated as the assessment indicates on page 26, number 6.5, and is dimly lighted partly because of antiquated lighting in those beautiful globes which we don't want to do anything to change and we have to keep the windows covered as I mentioned to protect the collection. The assessment est estimates that new interior lighting would cost 2500 uh, The Historical Society could buy and plans to buy reasonably priced LED track lighting to run up and down each side of the uh, uh, of the museum from Home Depot, and we think that will be a lot cheaper than, uh, you know, would come under a lot of, uh, would cut down the, the lighting cost. And so we would ask that the, that the town only pay, or we would ask the town to help us with the installation cost, to hire an, an electrician to come in and put those track lights up and then run the individual wires down through a conduit and we have lots of, of uh, outlets, 21st century style outlets along the wall. So it's not that big a deal. Um, and we really only need a, the, the, the cost of an electrician to be covered. Now, mo moving right, so it's not anything like $2,500. Chad Farnham's estimate for blowing insulation into the walls, crawl space, space and attic is 17,613 as you see here. This estimate just came in today in time for this meeting. He rushed it for us. Uh, and we are asking if you could fund this project over a three-year period because we know it's, this is a way too high price. Uh, the first year of, would be the attic, the second the crawl space, and the final year would be the walls. The Historical Society would like to know if you could provide a line item in the 2020 budget for the installation of track lighting at a cost of no more than $1,000. And again, it might come in at less than that. And insulation of the attic at a cost of $3,784 for a total of $4,784. I know that may seem like a lot, we can, but I just had to put it out there. An insulated, well-lighted museum will really help us fulfill our mission for the museum as the center of community enrich enrichment through local history, which it increasingly is becoming. It's an exciting time for us. Michelle. Yes. Thank you, Mimi, for being president, too, right now. Um, I do feel like I should speak on this because a lot of this is because of me. And I've been the curator in there for seven years. It's been an ongoing process, a lot of hard work. I remember when Jen Kramer first took her kids to Weeks Force. I think my oldest daughter was younger than my youngest daughter now, and they're six years apart. So within all of that, there's been a huge growth. I had every single teacher and um, like para, everyone was in the museum before school started this year. I've had 
almost every single grade contact me or want to work with me this year, and it's impossible for them to do that during the, we're open from May to the second week in October, okay? It completely cuts out the school children. And to me, my whole reason that I volunteer there is to help bring Guilford history alive for our children and our young family, like help share it with Guilford. And I, the kids have been great. I've had a second, fourth, third grade. Now I just talked to the kindergarten last week. The kindergarten is coming to the museum braving the cold in January. And they know, but they're so excited about what I shared with them last week that they're going to come do that. And it would just be wonderful. I know this is not an immediate thing. I know there's a lot of things going on in town. But this is a town-owned building. And it's, I, I would love to figure out a way that we can work together to help keep this momentum moving forward. Because I've never had such amazing response from the teachers. And I feel like the more that they knew that it was a place they could build their curriculum around. Um, Jen's done an amazing job of sharing what she does with all of the other grades. I, I, it's moving in the right direction and I don't want to lose the momentum if this is a three or four year out thing I, I feel like it's going to be a big deal so I just want to say that it, it, it is very different this year I haven't seen as many children in that building as I have this year and they love it and I would love to be able to work in their year round there's a whole new historical society board basically I have tons of volunteers coming in there we can set up displays we can build things out like I know our job is the interior but we don't own the building and we can't do anything infrastructure-wise. So that becomes the tricky balance on how do we make this work for the vision and, you know, respect the tenant, you know, that balance. So that's it. I just, I wanted to just reiterate the need is growing. It's not as it's been. And so yeah. do we have, uh, do, what is the capital? The we uses have, and sources we have, budget? Um, so it, it's not, it's your projects would be, compared with the Historical Society capital needs plan okay. and the budget. And budgeted in the fiscal year 2018 was $22,000 that would come out of the capital reserve, but it doesn't come out of our operating budget. So you've got the money in there. You just need to present a proposal. And I'm sorry that that wasn't clear to you from when we first sent this stuff out. No, I'm almost tearing. I, I really, just, we could really just I am sorry, because I thought that was made clear. Um, and so, we need to go through that with you. Can is there someone? Can we like? Yeah. I mean, what do we do? How do we do it? Could we talk with someone from a town that's more knowledgeable? I mean, I'm spent on my now. Yeah. She's doing everything she can. Like, if we, I don't. I, I don't know how to do it. When you say a proposal, this was my version. This is a great proposal. This is the beginning of what you need. But need we to start by coming in. Yeah. I, mean, I, I was sharing a little bit of this information when you and I met, whatever a week and a half ago. In, in addition to the information from the capital needs assessment, so. I just, so I, I want to say. It, it wasn't ahead. clear about how to proceed once you had the capital needs assessment because. I thought it had to be what was outlined. I, I will say no, that on my part. it's their assessment, but if your assessment is different, then we compare it and we make, you know, the funds were set aside, ostensibly, in to, to, for fiscal year 2018, and, um, so, it, so the items are grading, historical society, exterior siding, exterior term repair, not all in one year. Windows, building mounted lighting, roof covering, slate, porch repair, porch railing, foundation repair, crawl space, and upgrade. So there's no insulation in there, but you can switch clearly things. Can switch things well, the town was go I think it was four or five years ago that you guys got us the Renai heater that we have in there, and it's wonderful. It takes the chill off. I turn it on like the day before, and the kids. Yeah, that's how we're managing. That's how we're managing, and we didn't have that before. So the town did that for us then. If we can put some insulation in there. So I'm. If I had known this would be your agenda for tonight, I would have said to you, okay. "Let's work at it differently." But it's it's been gone through, you know, we've been through the whole um, capital needs assessment plan. It's a rolling 10-year plan. We have figured out how to make it work with our capital reserve budget. And, and so it's not, a, it's not a special budget. I it's wonder not an here. operation. I, yeah, so I, we I, can do this and yeah. we just get your proposal and get some more yeah, estimates. You, yes, do we need like three estimates yeah. kind yeah. of Probably. thing in the proposal? Yeah. Yes, because of the, I can the help amount you. of Great. what okay. it costs. And the other thing is from the, the capital needs assessment, the, the engineer that did that, because of the time of year that he was here, he clearly notes in that, and it may not have been in the pages that I gave to you, Mimi, 
but he made it very clear that when several of the buildings he visited, he was not able to inspect all parts of every building mm -hmm. to be able to see that, yes, you really do need insulation or other things like that. Um, and so there is that disclaimer as part of the report. So what, what I wanted to say is we have like a five-year total, like a, it's a rolling plan, and we had to figure, this is a town asset, so we had figured that it's going to take over the next, in, from 2005, beginning of fiscal year 2018 through to 23, $69,000. Okay, so this was our 2018 budget. This is what's in now till fiscal year ends. But it's, it'll, it's still and in the June reserve, but it hasn't been spent. Okay. And so you, one of you or both of you and Peter can get together and put together, you know, an understanding of what the proposal needs to be. Okay. And but first and we need three we estimates. We need three bids on the electrician. Well, and yeah, and the and three bids on the we insulation. Need to create we need to think about exactly your. Exactly. Yeah, I would go back and look at the plan. What I hope, yeah. I think Peter gave you. Yes. And see if it if that is consistent. Um, you you mean the, that, the assessment? Yeah. We and have see, that. So we do. It resonates with your needs, and yes. then if it doesn't explain why, you know, it's, you have, clearly you've just done that. With the, you need the insulation and you need the lighting. So those are two top priorities. So just think about how that fits in with the rest of everything. Sorry to make it not too difficult. <laughs> and you'd also want to be thinking about what is what is what the what future. Your what right, the future we need to think about are. the whole because yeah. everything that's in the assessment is really important too. I'll say that yeah. I'm in that building a lot, and all uh, those things he walked around and notated. Like we can't just forget that money. Right. We might need to ask for something in the future. Exactly. Right? But we need to be smart about it now, and this is amazing. Yeah. Or do I? Do we want the number? Should I be writing down the number? You don't need to write it. Oh, good. good. I can't. Can I can come and talk to me. Yes. Good. Good. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you okay. so much. And wait, what? I just do one thing in case you want to see if your money can go further. I would work with the Efficiency Vermont with insulation. Yeah. yeah. Or if you're doing like, uh, just work with them and see if there's some reim, if it's possible to get reimbursement because yeah. you might. They also Yep, yep, they do Efficient. need lighting so too, do but they, you will they to, come and do estimates? No, no. You, you have to talk to somebody and the lighting is separate and you need to figure out what you're going to do and go to them with the proposal because like light bulbs are already discounted so they don't, yeah. you don't get reimbursement for that but you might get for something else. So I would just work these seem like energy efficiency measures and I think this is great. It's consistent with our town plan. It's consistent with, our, with energy um, efficiency. Um, and I'm really glad that the school kids are I mean, the public is using yeah. our town buildings. It's pretty it, amazing. Wow. Well, but, thank you. What before you start on any work, we'll talk and then I'll contact Gary Swindler who worked who lives here in town and works for Efficiency Work. Worked. Oh, he's done. He's at least on sabbatical now. Oh, but well, he'll, 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 be helpful. He'll, he'll, be, he'll at least be helpful yes. who we can contact at mm -hmm. Efficiency Vermont because we need to work with them before any work starts. Right. I'll, I'll help, so just keep me in the loop. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. And congratulations yeah. on having such a uh, successful surprising yeah. outcome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so great not to think that anything will work out. Please come. I'm sorry, remind me your name again. My name is Chris Lenoir. Chris Lenoir. Okay, sorry. I'm so bad. That's all right. I was going to say it for the camera anyway. So I appreciate that. Uh, I am the chair of the board for Brattleboro Community Television, and I really appreciate you all taking some time uh, tonight to listen to us. I know Court Trowbridge, our executive director, uh, sent a letter to the board explaining this, and I hope you'll allow me to summarize some of that for the viewers at home as to why we're here tonight in case they haven't seen some of the stories written recently in either the comments or the Brattleboro Reformer. Um, but currently the Federal Communications Commission has issued a rulemaking that would allow cable companies which fund BCTV and public access television stations like us through a small percentage of cable subscriber fees to deduct the value of in-kind services they provide, such as carrying our channels on their network. Uh, if you've seen any of the stories in either the Commons or the Browder Reformer, this is about 85% of our funding. We have a $300,000 annual budget, but this 5% of the cable fees that they pay to public access stations accounts for about 85% of our funding. Uh, so if this change, which would be voted on this summer, goes into effect, it could effectively eliminate franchise fees as a funding source for our organization, which obviously would be very severe uh, in our abilities to do all the things that we do. 
Now, I know in response to the letter, uh, Ms. Morris, you sent a note to CORE asking for some specifics about uh, how we serve the Guilford community, so I wanted to share some of that with you. Uh, we began covering select board and town meetings on a regular basis for Guilford in 2011. Uh, but our relationship with Guilford in terms of covering events and providing residents with video production services and equipment to do their own programming uh, goes back over 20 years. Uh, to highlight some of the ways that uh, Guilford has been part of the 1,200 hours of new local content that we produce every year, and which, by the way, we won an mm -hmm. Alliance for Community Media Award for Best Overall Excellence. Um, Wyndham Southeast Supervisory Union and Act 46 committees and forums the Guilford Community Church, we cover their services weekly. Uh, stories about the Country Store, the Guilford Fair, the Green River Bridge, Broadbrook Grange, Friends of Music at Guilford, New England Youth Theater, and the 250th celebration of Guilford uh, when that took place. Um, some specific questions uh, that Ms. Morse had that I can answer relates to number of hours we spend on Guilford annually. It's about 250 hours. Uh, select board meetings get about a hundred views per meeting so far this year. Uh, if you're wondering where that compares to other towns, it's on the high end. Uh, town meetings get 150 views. Wyndham Southeast Supervisory Union meetings get 125 views. Uh, I want to point out those are views that we can count through online services. There's really no way to track who's tuning into Channel A yeah. right now. Uh, <laughs> but um, I mean, that's those mm -hmm. are the kind of metrics that we have available. Um, probably some word of mouth out there as well when you uh, talk to people in the community said oh I saw that you talked about this at a particular meeting I should also note that sometimes when the other print media isn't able to get here and cover your meetings right. they use BCTV to report they do. Yes, they do. so it's a conduit to get the message out for things that you want to do um, one last question uh, that Ms. Morse had had to do with comparing the costs of uh, BCTV providing these services versus a direct cost to do this independently. Uh, we estimate the cost to record a select board meeting would be about $3,000. Um, record select board meetings, not per annually. Meeting. Yeah, annually. And not broadcast them. Just not broadcasting and not also, you know, yeah. the hiring, training, uh, coordination of producers, you know, having great producers like Ian here uh, to do some of that work, you know, those are, are factored in. So we're here tonight uh, for, for two reasons. Uh, to one, uh, there's a, a currently a campaign going on to ask different select boards in different towns to submit a letter to the FCC in opposition to this new rule. And I believe a template yeah. for that letter was we part of the packet. I did have a printed okay. version yeah. of it. Um, we have actually know that all of the uh, Vermont delegation to Congress uh, is in opposition to this rule, Senator Sanders and Leahy as well as Congressman Welch. Uh, we have talked to members of the Vermont Legislature about it as well. Um, that letter needs to be submitted by the end of day on December 14th, uh, just so you know that is a date that is coming up. And the other uh, is to ask how we might be able to submit a funding request to try and account for some of these potential lost fees. I should add that with cord cutting going on right now, with Comcast losing cable subscribers, we've already uh, experienced a $20,000 drop in our annual revenues from what we get through Comcast, and that's been pretty consistent across both this state as well as other communities with public access. Uh, that was talked about in a couple of the newspaper articles around this as well. Um, we feel that covering your meetings, uh, the amount we would want to request, and whether that's through town meeting or, or however you think is, is the best way, we, we look to your guidance, uh, would be $1,800 for the upcoming fiscal year. We base that on a rate of $0.85 cents per person. Um, I know that this is around the time of year where you're probably Doing our in, into the budget, and, and this is not something that you accounted for. It certainly isn't something we accounted for either. So that eight hundred dollars would that be it? Eighteen. Eighteen. Yeah, yes. eighteen hundred. Yeah. Contingent on whether this rule was passed by the F. Well, uh, no, because we are asking for it also to sort of um, compensate for that revenue lost already as we prepare for even whether this rule passes or not. And I'm not going to put odds on whether it will or won't pass, uh, but we are seeing declining revenues and we're going to have to try and figure out other ways 
to compensate and provide the coverage that we've always provided. We've always been lucky that we have this cable subscriber uh, percentage <laughs> revenue, so we haven't had to be as forthcoming in asking for funds from the different organizations uh, that we support with our coverage. Uh, but that reality uh, may soon be in the past. Right, so one more question. Sure. I didn't quite, I'm not quite understanding. Mm -hmm. So the cable companies were giving you a, a small amount of revenue, and what they're saying now is, instead of paying you in cash, we're going to take, take it back in, in, because we provide you in-kind services, so we're not going to give you a month. You know, we're not going to give you monetary support exactly. because we're giving you in-kind services. Exactly. Uh, right now, BCTV has two channels through Comcast, for example, right? Channels 8 and 10. They can say, oh, that we carry these channels, we can assess X dollars in in-kind services right. that we do that, and we're going to deduct that from those cable subscriber fees. Got it. M Madam Chair, could I could I speak for a moment? Ian Keel, BCTV, Brattleboro resident. I want to step out from behind the camera. Um, I was on the board, I uh, was board president of BCTV for a number of years. That was uh, before Lynn. It's before my time. Yeah, so before yeah. his time. <laughs> and just to put it in historical perspective, public access television came out about uh, came about in the late '70s, and essentially the legal uh, the legal uh, framework for public access television said since the cable companies are granted a monopoly mm -hmm. it's very much like the phone company or, or the power companies because they have a, a we're giving them a monopoly and a public right of way letting them run their cables and run private they need to provide public access to their cable channel so what BCTV is is it's a public educational governmental access management organization. It is essentially the cable company's responsibility to provide public access to their their cable. Mm -hmm. um, BCTV is the designee and therefore it's all encoded in law. We're uh, allowed to be funded up to five percent of a person's cable bill. You'll see it's called a peg access fee. As you know many people are now not purchasing cable so I pay Comcast $93 a month for internet. None of that goes towards BCTV. Anyone who has these triple play packages where they get telephone, uh, cable, uh, and internet, let's say they pay 140 bucks a month, I don't know how Comcast decides what percentage of that 140 is cable and then 5% of that goes to. Yeah. So essentially this framework of funding public access through peg fees as we call it, uh, has been going on for nearly 40 years. So this announcement is really, uh, it's, it's really throwing everything for a loop because mm -hmm. as you said, uh, BCTV is not the only organization, but again, it's about 85% of BCTV's operating budget comes uh, through these PEG access fees. And just, you know, people have demanded to have stuff online and these, all these meetings are placed uh, online and accessible we actually can't pay for that, all the work to do that, right? We can't pay through it, pay for it through those peg access fees. That peg access fee can only be used to putting the content on the cable. So BCTV is sort of looking at this future where whether this rule goes through or not, uh, there'll be declining revenue coming from the, the peg fees as less and less people actually buy cable. It looks like the cable companies are trying to get out of that that obligation. Is that, do you think that's the purpose of this ruling? <laughs> it's quite clear that they want to get out of it. I think the key thing that the cable companies, and as they've consolidated, and this is just my personal opinion, uh, they've always used the argument that the, they're not, um, it's not affecting the customer as we get more and more, less and less cable. There's more, I mean, Comcast owns so much of the market and then Time Warner and AT&T just merged, is cable always argues, well, you can always get DISH TV. So they argue they're competitive. They don't need to be competitive amongst cable providers. That's why nobody really has a choice between cable providers. They'll say, oh, you'll just get it from, from uh, the dish. And so satellites never had to uh, uh, give money towards local communities. And I think uh, the cable companies have always felt that they see this peg access fee as an unfair tax. Whereas I think many people, especially in Vermont, because BCTV is one of the first uh, public access stations in the in the country, certainly the first in the state. Uh, a lot of communities understand that 
that these cable companies are given a, um, a publicly sanctioned monopoly and therefore they should give back to the communities. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, Chris, I guess my question, where this goes to me, where I struggle with this, is I don't know what the percentage of cable is in the town of Guilford. Um, I know I don't have cable because they won't bring it to me. I have to use satellite. I don't have a choice. But like in a town like Brattleboro, I believe, you, you probably have a choice, but the cable is a much easier um, option. So when I lived in Brattleboro, I used to watch BCTV before you had it online. You know, my question is, we, as you go out to the towns and you came up with this, you know, uh, number, did you back into this number based on the populations of all the towns you looked at to come up with whatever amount you needed to in terms of covering some operating fee? Sure, sure. Um, I, I, I don't know the exact answer to that question because it was calculated through Core Trover as your executive director, but I think that that rate of 85 cents per person uh, does have a, a population uh, component to the formula in terms of the potential number of people that we could serve in a town. Gotcha. I can get a clearer answer for you though. Yes, yeah, not that. Um, yeah. Any other questions? Sarah, you were nodding a lot about <laughs> just <laughs> in agreement, right? Um, I had a, a question for you. Are you asking other, you mentioned a number of organizations in town, for example, the church, which is not part of the select board. Um, are you asking them to, for support? Are you asking other organizations to support funding as well, or just the towns? Well, those organizations, I mean, any organization that, that uses our, our, you know, that, that we broadcast uh, does give us funding. And, and yeah, we are reviewing our fee structures across the board for anybody who accesses it right now, knowing that the different select boards are in the time of reviewing their budgets. Uh, we are trying to reach out to all of the ones that we cover. I believe it's eight towns. Uh, we cover core tonight is in the town of Jamaica, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is why I'm here, uh, and so we're trying to also just uh, make you aware of it. And then Chris, mm -hmm. this is Ian again. We we already, uh, as an organization, BCTV already has a few sort of regular uh, sponsors, right? We have sponsors as well. Yes, I mean reaching out to the to the private business community to sponsor our programming, uh, Brown World Savings and Loan. Uh, is one of those, uh, one of our primary sponsors for coverage yeah. of meetings like this. Um, so, so what's the to next address step? the first part of your reason for being here, which was would we um, be willing to submit a letter, I did ask Peter today to draft one based on your template um, you. so that we could consider it tonight. Um, with regard to the second one, the request for $1,800, um, we, have, we have been considering in great detail our whole communications budget and how we reach out to the community and, and involve the community in our meetings and other town activities and um, so we need to consider this in our budgeting meetings not tonight okay and we will do that um, and, and just I would just say you know if, if there's something we need to do it was more like how can we go through your process right. rather than making and if it is making a direct request to this board or if it's a petition that comes before um, the, the town yeah. meeting that was kind of where we're looking for your guidance. I think, it's, I think yeah. um, if we consider it part of communications, which I okay. think we do, okay. that can be something that the select board establishes. We've done it um, for using a couple of other community outreach forums, the Guilford Gazette and um, front, <coughs> excuse me, Front Porch Forum. This is a bigger chunk of money, mm -hmm. um, but so is our trying to, you know, <coughs> update our web presence and, and do a Guilford Operator's Handbook. Right. So but is this a nonprofit asking for yeah. like any other social service where they have to do a petition? We are no. a nonprofit, yeah. yeah. So I mean, or I mean, I that's like how we usually a go service. unless it's a, an assessment fee. Like, um, I would say for if it's a request for a donation, essentially from the town, then it needs to be. I mean, I know it's not all social services, but we sort of categorize them as such. But like it's a similar or you know a community service. DNA, SEVITS, all those guys have, guys, organizations have to um, petition. And I'm just, it sounds sort of like the same thing to me rather than. Um, Maybe we, that's a to discussion be fair. for our budget meeting. I'm, I'm, 
or unless you really want to have it tonight, Gabby. I'm just putting it out there. Just yeah. to, uh, no, I think it's no, I think it's a valid. It's I think to consider it. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's, well, it's a valid point. I mean, uh, something that's just a shade different. I mean, certainly in terms of process, that's the process that we've had for new people coming to us, but a service that we've already relied on is now we're at risk of losing and so we you know if the town decides that they don't want to vote yes for this you know I feel as if it would be I don't want to leave it up to the town to be at risk of losing the service, which is for the good of, of everyone to know what's going on. Well, I, I mean, I guess I would like, I mean, I think it would be helpful for them to know because they have to petition and they need to actually go out and petition in time. And I guess, um, you know, we're elected to, you know, whatever the town says we do. So I. Um, How would we make that determination of whether this falls into this the same category? I'm just saying we should look at what we've done in the past. We've always required people that you know, we can't just we can't just budget it. It's a you know if it's a donation usually to a nonprofit it goes through the town as a whole. It's the, it's the whole town's taxes, so it's their decision to make if it's not related to running our town. Is how I sort of generalize it. I don't know that it's ever been stated as policy as such, but that's generally what we've done. Michelle. I, I just want to say, like, on behalf of the planning commission, uh, BCTV videos are the number one way I educate the nine people sitting on my commission. And without them, I don't know how we'd know. We can't all come to these meetings. Uh, we've often wished we could have you guys at our meetings because there's been some very heated ones. And I, I can understand the question at hand, the balance, but I just want to urge whatever needs to happen to help support this because I feel it's invaluable for not just now but for years to come. Like I'm continually looking up BCTV videos from four or five years ago to, to see not just like the minutes because minutes are great but they're up to the author and to be able to see the people at hand and the conversations had helps share so much more and I just, I, it's invaluable for Guilford, that's all. Sarah? I just had a question. Currently, the select board doesn't pay for the service. Is that no, correct? That is correct. So, the, I just happened to know because when we had a, our, when we organized the Act 46 forum, I mean, we had to pay for that. So, it, it is $100. It was $150. $150 per, per meeting. And so, there are 25. 25 select board meetings. I mean, you're, that would be less than $1,800. I mean, that would be that be more that the expense would be more than eighteen hundred dollars per year mm -hmm. and I agree I mean I hear what Gabby's saying but this, this is also like the minutes it's a part of the public record of this meeting um, that you're currently not paying for yeah um, in the same way that others are so I just I can in consideration of like that the press writes about these meetings from these reported these that like, does that it's a really it's a part of um, it's a really it is a part of the communications um, <coughs> For the town. I don't think it's an essential part of the communication fabric. Yeah. No, and I, 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 I don't think we need to make a decision <coughs> right, about it right. tonight. I just, just think these are the ten. I don't mean emotional tensions. These are the process tensions. The considerations. So, thank. You. But how are we gonna? How how will this get resolved? Well, to I give? think we need to. We have another budget meeting on Wednesday morning, right? That's so tomorrow. Right. Wednesday. 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 So I think we'll just. No, you're right. It's Tuesday. I think we need to, and then we will let you know if you need to petition, right. or if um, if we can figure out a way to put the request into the budget. Right. One more question. There was something about a FAQ, and I didn't see it in the packet. Did anybody? Uh, about this whole. I didn't see it either. I, I don't remember. So did you did you produce the FAQ? Did you produce the no, FAQ? No, that would have been core. Okay, so I don't think we got it. We in never the received packet. it. Yeah. Okay. And I'd like to see it. All right, I will find that and forward it. Thank you. But so, thank you for coming. Thank you. So, appreciate, okay, it. Appreciate, appreciate it. Part number one was: Are, are you, we going to do a letter? Correct. And oh, right. I wanted to, I had to ask Peter to draft a letter based on the template and on Gilbert's experiences, and. Um, for the benefit of the public, I'd like to read the draft for the first time because I haven't seen this either. So, and then we can decide whether we want to authorize me to sign it or not. Um, 
It's addressed to the um, Federal Communications Commission, Chairman Pai. Actually, I'm going to ask somebody else to read it because my voice Dear is Chairman so Chairman Pai, Thank we, you. we write to support the comments of Broadwell Community Television, Inc., file, and so forth, and to dis disapprove of the proposals and tentative conclusions set forth in the FCC's September 25th further notice of proposed rulemaking in implementation of Section 621A1 of the Cable Communications Policy Act of 1984 as amended by the Cable Television Consumer Protection and Competition Act of 1992, MB Docket 05-311. Take that. <laughs> <laughs> our community has and continues to benefit from the service that BCT provides to our residents. As a small rural community in a mountain estate, it is difficult to get television programming without paying for it. Even then, it does not include local relevant information for our town. BCTV and similar PEG access television and community media services enable diverse sections of our community to access what is happening in town. From the elderly and ill to young families with children, BCT provides relevant, up-to-date information on community events, topics, and government. This local presence enables the residents of Guilford, Vermont to create and watch uniquely local programming about their community and local events and issues of interest to them. And that was the intent of the PEG provisions of the 1984 Cable Act, to enhance local voices, serve local community needs, and entrance and strengthen our local democracy. By defining <laughs> franchise fee in an overly broad fashion to include in-kind support, the FCC's proposals will shift the fair balance between cable franchising authorities and cable operators, something that was never the intent of the act and could ultimately result in such reduction in franchise fees as to defund PEG access in our state. We appreciate your consideration and hope you will protect PEG access in our community and others by choosing not to adopt many of the proposals in the further notice. Sincerely, Sheila Morse, Chair of Guilford Select Board. You were the kid I always hated in class because you could always read so well. Oh. Something you were just getting. Oh, I got it. Um, <laughs> I'm only kidding. Well uh, done. Richard. I could do it and laugh too. <laughs> uh, I suggest that we you move, move on that? this. Yes, I move this letter. I would second it. Yes. Any other discussion? <laughs> Any discussion? Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm actually. Okay. Um, Don, thank, thank, you. You, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. Um, Broadbrook Community Center Partnership and Fees. Don and Sarah, thank you so much for waiting to the dead end of the meeting. Hated was a strong We're the closers. It, it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> almost the closers, yeah. Hated would have been strong, oh, yeah. I should have said. Um, <laughs> I, um, I was the bad one. So the purpose of this is to discuss the partnership agreement. Well, we asked to be on the agenda because we learned from the, an article in the Commons that you had some questions um, for us after we had come here. I think it was in October on mm -hmm. on October twenty second. So we had a we just wanted to Don and I just wanted to follow up. We had a good meeting with Peter and Sheila and mm -hmm. Borden, um, and we also. Um, you know, to answer some of those questions, but we wanted to come to the board, mm -hmm. and you know, to be able to be available to if there are any more questions. And also, we, you know, we were when we came, we were kind of expecting you to respond to us about mm -hmm. the fee, but you, 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 we kind of got the feeling that you didn't like our request, the the, the numeric, the the the, the amount, the amount. Yeah, we were kind of expecting you to come back to us with a suggestion, mm -hmm. but but. Um, uh, but you didn't. But we, what we, the board, the BBCC board met, um, and we've communicated uh, with Peter. So I hope that he's communicated mm -hmm. with all of you that, you know, um, and just to be clear that this is for operating costs. It's not. It's outside from um, the capital budget. The board is raising the 1.2. Now it's 1.25 million dollars for the building. So, um, so we, we, we would like to. Mm -hmm. Respectfully request um, um, that included in that if the partnership agreement looks good, with the understanding that that fee would be negoti negotiated mm -hmm. or decided every year, um, um, that this would be five thousand dollars, which was 
our original request had been ten. So ten thousand, not ten dollars. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, but and yeah. five, not ten. Right. Yeah. So anyway, we just thought we would. We've had some nice back and forth with Sheila, just about like minor things on the agreement, um, and so. If, we really wanted just to come to see if there are any other questions. I think we, we really appreciate the relationship that we have with the town. We know that the town appreciates the relationship with us. It's really great. And we're, um, you know, this is, we're also, this is a new, kind of a new formalization of, of a, kind of a, of the town using this building <coughs> that we all care so much about in, in our town. So. I thought it was nicely ironed out in the contract where the partnership and the reason for the partnership is, is articulated. And I didn't think, for in my, for my, uh, from my perspective, I didn't think there was anything else to talk about. I, right. So I thought that that you got it, and then you got that the town, I mean, that the select board was in support of the BBCC and in support of the thesis that the BBC is a is a is a, a value to our town, and and is helping to create community in our town. Great. Well, that's great because you know when an yeah, I'm only speaking for myself, but uh, that no, is you're coming from the. Oh, I totally agree with you. Um, so well, it's great because a lot of people we just heard there are a hundred people who view BCTV who can't come here, and we just you know, and and, and, and um, you know with the article in the in the paper, you know it's it's um, it was there were some parts missing, you know. So we just wanted to come to just make sure that we were all working from the same page. And, I think we are. Okay. okay. Well, and I wish. You know, I think that the the draft document that includes the history of the building, the mm -hmm. history and evolution of the relationship, you know, we can't read this all into BC TV, but I think it's really essential, let's say, for uh, Wendy or anybody who is going to write about this evolving <coughs> relationship to be able to have <coughs> access to our real information, and this feels like a, um, a much more comprehensive uh, description of what it's about and how we got here and the way we want to move on from this point. I mean, I was very upset, actually, to hear that uh, somehow there was a, um, a misunderstanding or discommunication or something about it. Well, this we are now, this is great. So I think that what would be helpful for us too is to know how we want to how your process from here is working because we had, when we were here before, um, not sure if it's going to be part of the like the town meeting up at town meeting what we have to do do we have to do a petition or is it included with other um, line items other li line items that are up for discussion so what, what do you need us to you know to do and how do we need to prepare for that I mean the select board can also directly put it on as uh, a uh, sorry, an article an article thank you Richard um, on if they so wish what do you mean another, directly put it on? So the select board has the authority to put to put articles directly on the warrant that are not necessarily petitioned. Obviously, petitioning is something that they could ask BCTV to, to do if you so wish, but you don't have to. So we have 12 articles in the warrant for town meeting. If the select board puts on, we don't have to petition to get an article there. We can present. We can just present right. the article. But uh, so. I think this is two parts again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the town, via the select board, can enter into an agreement with Broadbrook Community Center mm -hmm. for a partnership agreement right. in appreciation of the long-standing implied services to the community. Thank you, Don. Yeah, um, I, I realized that. And I didn't in, think there was in anticipation any such that this will so. continue for years to come. Sure. And then we will have a line item in the budget. This would be included, I would think, in services to the town. Mm -hmm. Um, which would be library, no, no. Fire, department, fire department, and um, what's the other service to the town? WRC. Um, fire department's a separate board. Isn't it the water or sewer? Is it Algiers? Yeah. Yeah. Algiers? So that's what I'm wondering if we need but, to do a separate. But that's but it's different from entering into the agreement. Right. The budget is one right. thing. The agreement is yes. another. Because yes. the budget is going to have to be reviewed annually. Whereas the agreement, I'm assuming, is, is this going to keep ongoing. going. 
until such time as it gets yep. terminated. So, can, can, so yeah. we can deal with that. Yeah. yeah. That's so, great. Um, so I, I think we're at the point you sent some, <coughs> a few changes. None of them were things that I think we had. And I shared them with, with the board yesterday. And then I I responded with mm -hmm. a few counter changes, but they weren't they weren't. Um, you know, they, they didn't they didn't uh, remove anything you said. I just clarified right. a few things, and we did want to make sure that everybody knew that in our um, ultimate agreement, we really liked having that preamble, um, which our board would like to have on all agreements, whatever ones we make. Specific this, about what you mean by the preamble. The preamble is this very short thing. It says Broadbrook Community Center's partnerships with other Guilford organizations will strengthen the shared commitment we have to the 1896 Grange Hall as it is renovated and developed into an important hub for the community. Partners will not only contribute to the sustainability of the center, but will help to animate the building and will be essential to the success of the center and also be valued by the Broadbrook Community Center. And that was to make sure it was understood it really was a two-way yeah. kind yes. of thing. So that's that's part of A lot of the stuff in this document is things that would get taken out. Yeah. I think the background and history could be a, an appendix. It could be an appendix. It's we such leave a great it somewhere. history yeah. there. I'd hate to lose it. Sure, that's a good point. Um, and yeah. I think what we're looking at here is for a motion to approve the partnership agreement. Do, so, in other words, I just want clarification. We're approving this draft document and then the BBCC will go back to your board and approve it as well? Is that what we could the, do? Yes, is there are, are, there are changes since so right, the board and, has seen it. And then the next step is to put, pick an article that funds it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, so in terms of approving so. the agreement, I think perhaps the motion might be for Don and me to finalize the document or you know, to, to work out the few remaining, mm -hmm. unless somebody has some substantive mm -hmm. edits based on what we've done, because no. um, it seemed to me like we were pretty much in we agreement. We were pretty close, and so it'd be a matter of tidying it up and um, having, getting rid of anything that's not in it and saying this is right. this and exact then, wording, and then we would take that to our board. So then we could. Sign it. I move that the select board uh, approve this contract contingent on uh, the further refinement of it between the chair of the select board and Don McLean, the contract writer. I second that. And the contract writer? <laughs> Can we just change that to the program partnership agreement? Hmm? Instead of contract, could you say program, oh, program partnership, partnership agreement? Yes. The PPA. And Don's official title. And he's the chair. He's the he's the vice chair of the board. He's the vice president, president of the board and the chair of the partnerships and programs, programs and committee. Okay. Which is yeah, actually the P -P which makes that's you a I very appropriate that's person what I meant to handle to say. this. Yes, with a lot of P's. Yeah. Um, is there any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I'm recusing myself. She's recusing. Yeah. I'm recusing. I'm not saying anything Thank you. Mm -hmm. for conflict. But she is smiling. Yes. Yeah, right. She probably and now, likes it anyway. The second part, as Richard noted, is that um, I think that we should have an article, um, much as we would do for other services to the town. And I'm not talking about social services, I'm talking about annual services to the town, mm -hmm. where we uh, put in this budget amount. Um, so if there's an article, I just just because I'm forgetting, if it's it, it will be in the budget mm -hmm. as presented to the town. Mm -hmm. Yes. And but there's an article that sort of calls attention to the townspeople. Right. Yes. It's separately is. voted on, so and the budget would change if the town voted differently. Okay. Right. Yes. So when we remember when we go through the budget, we start with the general funds yeah. and all that, but it could change. Yeah. Similar to the fire. Do we need a motion for that? I think it's an a, probably a good thing to do that. I so move. That, that the select board uh, add to the <coughs> town warning an article that is referring to the partnership, what is proposed it? The partnership pro proposed agreement. partnership agreement um, fee. fee. Funded First for year fee. Funded for 2019. Fiscal year 2020. Or 2020 for $5,000. Yeah. Um, I'll second that. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I'm recusing. Um, it's not going to be a proposed agreement once it's an agreement. Right. Just right. So, 
Right. Okay. Great. Great. Okay, good. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Good. Yeah, for walking through the yeah, process absolutely. with absolutely. us and getting all the questions answered it's that important. we had. And it's we important. greatly appreciate yeah. it. It's really important. Your time, I know it took a lot of time. It's okay. It's, these, are, these are relationships and they're it's important. A, it's, a, so. it's new. Yeah. Yeah. It's but the Grange is a very important this is now a BDCC building yeah. can to I just, the town of Gilbert. Can I just be clear? I'm just thinking this through. So we agreed to sign the contract? Yep. But we didn't agree to have the money, right? We have to wait for the town to approve. But how do you have both? What happens? So we're signing a contract saying we're going to do this. If the town votes it down, what happens to the contract? Is it's it invalid? It's not. I mean, it's it's not unless you put that. Is it in the it's agreement? It's in the it's in the agreement. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's it's actually it's in there twice in the agreement. So, um, yeah. Honestly. Yeah. And my other comment is, we really should. I mean, I think public-private partnerships are. An essential way for towns to move forward and to get especially small towns the resources and offer the resources to their community um, that towns don't normally have, you know small towns don't normally have the capacity to actually do so i think it's really important to educate the select board about how those things can work and educate the taxpayers about why we're doing certain things um, i just have seen a lot of things in other communities really work well with public private partnerships mm -hmm. especially at the ability to leverage funds you know, um, and I think that's an important thing for everybody, um, including the community, to understand that this is a community building, and that we're essentially leveraging philanthropic and grant funds through this nominal payment. Really, I mean, and the, uh, the option, if we didn't have a group of citizens and the select were supporting this, would be to have a dilapidated building downtown. Mm -hmm. That would our nap downtown in our village, in one of our village designated. So we're centers. getting the benefit of, of all these leverage of, funds right, and yeah. the support and the staff and all, and then it's offered to the community as a resource. So when you're talking about grand list values, it becomes something that the town has to nominally pay for, um, but will add to the grand list value as a as a resource. Good point. So if you wanted to use BCTV to capture Gabby's statements here <laughs> as you're discussing it, <laughs> for um, it's probably at minute. Well, now we're 31 minutes, minutes yeah. and 38 seconds. For it's time minus to move along. Sorry, one minute. I mean, I I, Michelle, quickly, I, I want to back on what Gabby's saying because I 100% agree, and that's a very impossible thing often to share. And like, I wish I could capture words and write them down and share them with the Planning Commission, but it's, it's also reasons why groups like you guys, if you could come share with the Planning Commission, because that is a, a broad ranging. We'd love to have you at our January meeting, January 23rd, 6.30, here. Um, you guys are the only ones to be on hand, but it's a Wednesday. She might be up in Montpelier, but you okay. can invite. If so anyone can, can come, <laughs> anyone can come share. But yeah. it's, it's about opening up. I, sure. I, like, I'm going to look that part up, Gabby, because, <laughs> well, because there's a lot of misnomers about how things work, and it's always like someone's doing something behind someone or mm. for their own benefit, and that's not true. There's there's so much good that can happen if, yeah. if, if sources are combined, as she was saying, and I just wanted to publicly say that, too, because it, it's a battle that we're constantly fighting, and I feel like a lot of it's coming together for the positive right now for town. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you, Michelle. Okay. I mean, I was just going to say, hopefully the long-term support of the BBCC by the town can also help you leverage future funding. Sure, exactly. It's, it's, it's reciprocal. Yes, it's, important. it's very important as we go out for funding to right. say we have the support of our town. And, and the communication to. piece, it, yeah. whether it's yeah. when you do that or when you do it in town meeting is critical. Built, so. mm -hmm. We have to renew our Guilford Center designation this spring oh my God. as well. Oh, so I feel like we, we just talk about got that. it. We did, five years ago. <laughs> So, so thank, you. Thank, you. thank you very much. Moving on Everyone, to more. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck with the rest of your night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Has anybody um, gone through the warrants, the invoices tonight, the warrants? Gabby, Gabby look at she's worker. exhausted. Oh, you <laughs> so, would you like to carry us through this? I'll make the motion to pay the following payroll and warrants. Payroll for the week ending December 2nd, 2018, in the amount of $8,382.78. Payroll for the week ending December 9th, 2018, in the amount of $5,550.20. And expense warrant 1911, in the amount of $18,219.25. There were no real big um, expenditures, just a lot of little ones, particularly with um, uh, repairs to, for road crew vehicles. Uh, for a grand total of $32,152.23. Second? Second. Richard, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Communications? I don't have any, but Miranda has one. And I have one. 
Oh, well, why don't we do yours? So mine are to remind us of the public hearing for CC4G um, Wednesday, December 26th at 6 o'clock to close out the grant. And Peter, would you give us the dates for the two special select board meetings? Uh, yes, I will. Just give me a brief. Do I need to call them for that? I won't be out of town. The public hearing? Oh, uh, the public hearing. Okay, no. It's a public no. hearing. The select board here. It's yeah. This yes, I, I'm it's sorry. on Kwanzaa. It's true. It's I, on Kwanzaa. We have it's public um, hearing. It's just to clear the. We have the select board. The public meeting is prior to the select board meeting at 6:30 on December 26. So I'm just reminding people. And then we I have bet. two special meetings. Yes, they're. They are both in January. So the first is a capital plan budget meeting on uh, Tuesday, the 8th of January at 1.30 in the afternoon. You sent out invitations for this. I have done. This is just for the public. This is for the notice. public Thank to you. notice that we have all of these meetings. Select board members have already been notified of these. And there is a uh, second special select board meeting on Tuesday the 15th, immediately following the regular select board meeting the previous day. Um, and this is to discuss and hopefully approve the budget um, for fiscal year 2020. Thank you. Um, do I hear a what, oh, what, sorry, what, what, the 15th? Sorry? I'm sorry, that's at 6.30 in the evening. Okay. Randy, you have a communication? Wait, can oh, I just, I'm sorry, can I, is there a reason why we can't do the budget approval at our regular meeting? We have to have another meeting to do it at since it's the following day. I was just a little confused by that, why we need to have another meeting. True discussion with other select board members, the uh, concern that the meeting would go too long because of uh, overall discussions around the budget in addition to dealing with other we're going to select one matters. All right, if everyone else feels that way, I feel like the budget approval process should be something that's like public. Um, public. It I mean, public. it is public, but it's not on the right day, so it's not a normal select board time. That's, that's just my opinion, a, but everyone it's disagrees, a, and that's okay. It's, but it's at 6.30 at the same time that it... But it's not during a regularly scheduled, it's a special meeting. So that's just my opinion that the pub, you know, that's just my opinion that we should try and do it as publicly and transparently as possible. We when were we? trying to um, make sure that we had sufficient time for everybody to discuss it in as much detail as they wanted, Gabby. And so we were afraid that we would. I'm totally like, fine if everyone else is or okay. Like if that. everybody else disagrees and thinks that's that and okay. agrees with that plan, I'm just putting it out there that. Is there another? I mean, I think the concern is that we're going to, if we do this while we have others you know, in a regular select board meeting, that all we're going to do is go over the budget that we've been going over in line item by line item. Is that, is that what you're concerned about? I am concerned that we have sufficient time to discuss, respond to any questions, any issues that are raised. Um, and I think that if we try to do that in a regular meeting, we can. But we might be here till 10 o'clock at night. And I know Richard gets antsy. No, no, no. That, but so, I mean, that's that's what I guess I'm asking. And I do. So, so the solution is to have this extra it's meeting. An extra meeting. We don't need to um, do it if people feel they want to just do it all in one. That is fine. With well, me. Uh, the question is, do you well, think that after all these budget meetings that we're having, uh, I think we're having five budget meetings that we would be prepared just to to quickly ratify it? Well, see, I would agree with that. But. Gabby hasn't been able to attend one meeting, oh, and so she. But I can't attend the Tuesday night meeting anyway, so it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm. So it doesn't matter. The point I mean, was to give you time to do it. It's not going to help me particularly, so I don't care. I guess. Um, I'd like to hear whether everybody would like us just to try to do it on the 14th of January. Well then, I, I mean, that would be would my like, recommendation. Yeah, I would if, I'm happy if, to do it, if, but I do not want people to feel annoyed if this meeting goes till 10 o'clock no, no, on Monday the 14th. It's, it's, but I mean, aren't we going to be ready to, I mean, we, we would have Four of us are that. ready. Yeah. No, but Gabby, will you be, you will have reviewed the budget? It, I get a budget with a description of the changes. I mean, this, it should be, pre, I mean, it's, it's, it's there. No, it's it a live isn't. story. It, it shouldn't be too. It isn't. It's I, a live document. It's there all the time, Gabby. So if I, I can get the, but I don't want to look at it halfway through that. I don't find that 
particularly helpful. I'd like to just see the end document with with a description so of what changed. That's what, it. When do you feel, with our meetings, our budget meetings, the budget will be finalized? We're at number four or five. Right? Or as close to final before a select board vote. Tomorrow is the third one. Right. Um, so tomorrow so we change. should finish up the select board budget. Um, Wednesday, minus, you mean. I'm Wednesday. sorry, thank you. Thank you. It's on Wednesday afternoon. Um, we should easily finish the select board budget and be able to begin the highway budget. Right. Um, we may even be able to get through the highway budget if we stay on track. Right. Um, we do have, tentatively, we do have another budget meeting uh, scheduled on the 9th of January to just do any final revisions or edits. So we'd have a, what I would say, a 90% you yeah. know, completed budget that we could share with the there's, select board. There's no surprises in after the, the yeah. meeting, before the January meeting. So why don't we try to do that after that last budget? What? Well, not last. After that budget meeting, where we feel we have. A How about this? We, if we don't feel that we're prepared, that we need to, that we need to, then we'll have another. We'll have the special meeting. But we have to, we have the t a time window to be able to make that decision. Yeah. So the hope is that we would have a budget that is 99% or almost 100% right. done it be for the meeting. It should, well, and, it should be 100% done for the meeting, otherwise we can't Right, right. And, and, and yeah. with, with the assumption that you will have, you will have re uh, read it and made your comments. I mean, if you get it to me Thursday before, I mean, it's, I mean, if, it's if not you, a hard budget. If right. those of you who right. make it to the budget meeting this Wednesday and we are able to get through that, we can send it out. Sure, we could That's you have three weeks to that's review why it. it. Right. This really is. Okay, I think that's what we should do. Okay. okay. So I will cancel the one on the 15th. Correct. And we will be prepared to put Vote this on, on the, on the 14th. 14th. Okay. With the understanding that it is, is put out to the select board. Well in time. Well in time. That Okay. So, well, so actually, we're canceling well it or not making to raise it? questions so that we right. can be prepared can to answer them efficiently right. at the meeting. So, yeah, for example, Gabby, right. if you have questions based on the fact that you missed some of the discussions, right. it would be good if we could have those questions in advance so that we know how to. Or if there's notes on the discussions, then um, sometimes there are, sometimes there aren't. You know, there's not minutes, so. The notes go onto the actually the budget page. Or if you give me the notes on the budget page, that's even better because then I can look at the line item. So I don't okay. think we've been capturing too many of the notes. We've been Not capturing more questions than, yeah. than but decisions. But we've made the changes on yeah. the yeah. budget yeah. sheets. I, I, and I, once she was feeling a little better, she and I, as we have done in the past, we can sit down and just review the changes and expound on those notes so Gabby has enough to yeah. understand Good. what is So we're canceling that, perfect. right? Yep. Yes, I have canceled I think that's it. A, Okay. So, Richard, do you have a motion? Yes, I, I, I know. I, I, oh, I'm so no, sorry for ruining it. Let's just make it snappy. <laughs> well, okay, I'm taking uh, this opportunity to share the poem that I wrote for Thank Guilford you. Elders. Yes. Every year I write a poem for the Christmas stockings of Guilford Elders. And since this is our last, it's the end of Hanukkah. It's a dark time. Uh, it's like we're right around solstice, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so, with your leave, uh, I will read the poem that I wrote. It's uh, based on "How Do I Love Thee" by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Is it a sonnet? It's a sonnet, and it took me four days to write. And let's see. It references Shirley Squires um, and her. Home Museum of Precious, and Silas Philgate of Arbor Gate's Tree Service, who rescued the cat from the tree in Brattleboro. Okay, the rest is right in here. It's called Winter Light. How do we winter? Let me write the ways we count on one another to make light of early dark. Take heart when sleet is spite. Our road crew scatters grit across the glaze. Their humming motors sound a hymn of praise. Step out and lift your voice to silent night. When scanners call disaster, strength unites as volunteers take arms against a blaze. When a cat cries, 
six days stranded up a tree. Silas shinnies to the crown and lulls her down. When Shirley counts nativities, garage of mangers, glowing miracles, we spring for hope and generosity, though sun lies dormant as the daffodils. Oh, bravo. Oh, I love it. We need copies of that. We do, and you should send it to and the fire department. And yes. Yeah, and and we should said, have one. Miranda doesn't miss a thing. That's <laughs> awesome. That's really. Uh, that's really that's that's a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Can we appreciate? Can we? We did. We did. <laughs> appreciate. <laughs> right. Not appreciating he can right appreciate me in the car. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Miranda, Richard, that was spectacular. Was there spectacular. something you wanted to move? Yes, adjournment. Oh, second. Is there a second, Gordon? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned.